Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 62nd Green Monday. Uh, welcome to our audience in London. Welcome to our panelists in London. Welcome to our panelist in San Francisco. Uh, welcome to our online audience. Welcome to those following us on Twitter. Um, and uh, an advanced um, welcome to those who will watch us on YouTube. Because through all these different mediums, we've now got a debating cauldron um, which engages over 500 people for each topic. And that's a great opportunity to move the conversation along in areas that are both important to business uh, and to life. So what's in store for the next 75 minutes? We're going to look at some of the early stage technologies and business models that may allow us to change the way that we use nature's resources. It's a bit like being back in the early 1990s uh, in dot-com times. <clears throat> and if we imagine then, we would be looking into the, uh, the business models and technologies that might come off the arrival of the internet. And if you read the tea leaves correctly back then, you'd be looking at some pretty small and strange businesses. You wouldn't want IBM on your stage. You wouldn't want Microsoft on your stage. You'd have wanted those innovative startups called Google and Amazon. Because in a period of major disruption, the game-changing solutions tend to come from early stage businesses. So is resource scarcity a major source of economic disruption? And I'll, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so I have to forgive my voice. But I'm going to answer that question through um, some thought leaders. All of these publications have come out in the last 12 months. So this is from the World Economic Forum and Accenture, making more with less, scaling sustainable consumption and resource efficiency. Dame Ellen MacArthur Foundation, towards the circular economy. McKinsey. The Resource Revolution, Meeting the World's Energy, Materials, Food and Water Needs. And probably my favourite, uh, Jeremy Grantham, who's written two fantastic um, essays on resource scarcity. The first one, Time to Wake Up, Days of Abundant Resources and Falling Prices Are Over Forever. And the second, Resource Limitations 2, separating the dangerous from the merely serious. So all of these publications are arguing we are now moving into an era of resource scarcity. And as any economist will tell you, scarcity manifests itself in rising prices. And price inflation in, in itself creates innovation. And so my next prop is this book, The Sixth Wave, uh, which is um, <coughs> arguing that Resource scarcity will create the sixth wave after we've had water, uh, ICT, uh, various, various others that have come before us, but a major economic paradigm uh, coming off here. So we sat about and thought, well, what are the solutions that might be small and a little perhaps awkward today, um, but which could be the Googles and the Amazons of resource efficiency. And this is what we came up with. Uh, this panel before you, um, just to quickly run through what we have tonight, we have Relay Rides talking to us from San Francisco, one of the poster childs of collaborative consumption. One shared car takes 13 cars off the road, and that's radical. We have Paul Dickinson. He'll be arguing that we're the last generation to do ridiculous amounts of travel. We have Syngenta, a global leader in what they regard as sustainable food. Technology and food is controversial for some and a game changer for others. We have Recycle Bank, recently rated by Forbes as one of the 50 most innovative companies in the world. Let's see if by the end of tonight putting electronic chips in wheelie bins feels normal. And as we listen to our panellists, we must ask ourselves, is what we are listening to 
a threat or an opportunity for big companies? And is the change enough to create a Kodak moment, precipitating the destruction of a big organization, or an Apple moment, where it will propel you into a new era? So let's turn now to our first speaker, Paul Dickinson, who most of you will know as the founder of the Carbon Disclosure Project, but who tonight will talk about communication and travel. And before Paul comes on, I just want to say one short story, um, because I think Paul's had enormous influence on the business landscape, um, and this characterised it for me. I was asking someone on the board of Ecoimagination how Ecoimagination was born, and for me and many others, it is one of the best business strategies around sustainability we've seen. And he said it all started with um, a letter from the Carbon Disclosure Project asking uh, GE to declare various things. And that letter went to Jeff Immelt, the CEO of GE. Jeff Immelt said, do we know this information? And they said, no. And we said, well, we, why do we need to know it? And they said, well, climate change. And he got his scientists to peer review the climate science. They came back to um, Jeff Immelt and said, yeah, the, the science seems real. Um, and from there, they crafted a response. But it all came about from the Carbon Disclosure Project. So let's see if uh, Paul can influence this audience tonight as much as he has influenced GE. Paul, over to you. And a big round of applause to Paul as well. Yeah. 